Ban TikTok! Ban TikTok! Both parties think we should ban TikTok. China are spying on us. We gotta ban TikTok right now because there are no other social media sites that are used to spy on citizens by any other government except for all other social media sites and the United States government and all other governments. So ban TikTok. Hmm. <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on this voyage to truth and freedom. Here we are, freely speaking. Click the link in the description to support us while you can as we boldly move forward at a time of censorship. And we can see the protein material being reformed into legislation of control right now before our very eyes. The legacy media will say, in a rare moment of bipartisan support, both Democrats and Republicans agree that we should shut down TikTok. TikTok is Chinese owned, therefore the Chinese can use it to spot algorithms and spy on American citizens and interfere with elections. Well, good God, there are many ways to interfere with elections. We all know that now. And is this banning of TikTok about protecting you or controlling you? And I guess that's become one of the questions I would ask about any regulation or legislation that's being passed, just to take a breath, take a step and go, is this about protecting me or is this about controlling me? Whether it's climate change, whether it's pandemics, whether it's wars, whether it's health, just look at always at protection or control. And this is a great example. We were just going to protect you from TikTok. What do you mean? What, like going like that on TikTok? Like what you really need to be protected from are institutions and groups that are hell bent on power. Now let's have a look at some of those and let's have a look at what's really going on together and see if we can make sense of it. Tonight, the House overwhelmingly voting to ban TikTok, the wildly popular social media app, unless it's sold by its Chinese parent company ByteDance. Lawmakers responding to concerns, TikTok poses a national security threat and compromises the data of its 170 million American users. Do you remember when Trump wanted to ban TikTok? That was about the control of free speech. Now, the neoliberal media establishment are broadly supportive of this idea. You've already heard that it's bipartisan. Why is that? What's changed? Remember when we talk about principles here, we say it's a value, an idea that doesn't fluctuate just because it happens to be inconvenient. Telling the truth is one such value. So what's happened here? How come it's bad if Trump wants to do it, but it's good if Biden wants to do it? This bill therefore forces TikTok to break up with the Chinese Communist Party. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe. A winner. A winner. It's interesting, Nancy. I wonder if you've got any information that you might tell your husband, Paul Pelosi, who invests primarily in tech companies and seems to be doing quite well. In fact, in the time that Nancy Pelosi has been in office, her personal wealth has significantly increased, largely due to the investments of her husband. So we are not watching a person without skin in the game, even when it comes to personal investments. But what's more important and significant when it comes to this story is the legislation isn't particular or exclusive to TikTok. It's any websites that are accused of interfering with elections. Another piece of vague language. Notice how consistently the language being used that legitimizes centralized authority is often quite vague. That's hate speech, that is. Extremists will be punished. TikTok will have to go. So it's just TikTok then. Well, also though, websites. What? All websites? Yeah, the interview of elections. What do you mean by interview of elections? Oh, don't try and tie me down, man. I'm free. I'm like TikTok. I thought you were banning TikTok. Yeah, we're we'll getting rid of that. The FBI and top intelligence officials officials sounding the alarm, warning the Chinese government could use TikTok to access Americans' personal information. Oh yeah, you wouldn't want that. Did Edward Snowden not happen? Did that not happen? Did we not listen to the plain fact that the agencies that you fund through your taxes are spying on you all of the time, capturing and scraping all of your data, compiling it until they need it continually. And even now, while saying they don't do it, they're deploying private firms to do exactly that and then buying it. Like they say, oh, we can't directly spy on our citizens, but what we can do is get private firms to capture data and then we'll buy that data from them. It's the same thing. They're ingenious at manufacturing methods to continue to exert control. And this is obviously entirely about control. The problem is their ability to manipulate you. They already manipulate your alg algorithm based on what you like. How dare you manipulate my algorithm based on what I like? It's interesting because it's a sort of apply morality to these systems that are essentially following business imperatives. And if the fundamental concern is the relationship between TikTok and the Chinese state, then let's have a look at the 
relationship between Facebook and the United States of America and Google and the United States of America. Not only their curious origins and connections to the deep state organizations, but their ongoing compliance, broadly speaking, with American domestic policy, their willingness to censor, the way that they balked at being broken up and said that they would become compliant. Remember that? When that was the thing, we're going to break up Facebook, we're going to break up. These are monopolies. Uh, what if we help you censor everyone and control everything? Well done. Now you can stay as Facebook. And that can be that can be innocent. All social media companies do that to try and tailor your feed. But it's a problem when 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 the person in charge, the entity in charge of manipulating can be an adversary like the Chinese Communist Party. What about an adversary like the American government? What about that? What about our increasing recognition that the states and institutions that purportedly govern us regard us as enemies? Note their deployment of words like extremism and hate and anti-terror organizations being repurposed domestically. And when you know for a fact that they occupy an entirely different world economically, and in many cases, ideologically. Who's your real enemy? As Muhammad Ali once said, I ain't got no beef with the Viet Cong. Viet Cong ain't doing nothing to me. How can I shoot them poor people? I would just take me to jail. But who is controlling your life? Who is manipulating you? Is it China? TikTok denies those allegations. But lawmakers now warning TikTok could interfere in the election. And then we wouldn't be able to vote for either of these elderly men. The risk in terms of propaganda, the risk to influence our election are just too severe. President Biden recently launched his own campaign, TikTok, to meet young voters where they are. <laughs> I'd be worrying about him meeting young voters where they are and sniffing them on top of their heads where they are. But he says if this bill lands on his desk, he will sign it. If they pass it, I'll sign it. Good work, everyone. Take the rest of the week off. As president, Donald Trump once tried to ban TikTok by executive order, but now he's against a possible ban. He says it would help Facebook, which he's railed against. But Trump's change in tune also comes after he met with a top Republican donor who has a major financial stake in TikTok's parent company. Oh, the financial ties influencing his political decisions. That's no good. You won't get any of that in the Democrat Party or from the Clintons or any of those guys. If you check where their funding is, you could never track their donations and their lobbyists towards the instantiation of policies around war or pharmaceuticals or anything at all. And there's simply no point looking. Just shut up and watch the legacy media and then go quietly to your bed and eventually your grave. We can't continue to bring you this potentially paradigm-shattering information without the support of our sponsors. We got one for you right now. Stay to the end, please. Is it me or does the future feel more insecure and uncertain? Wars, pandemics, lies, trickery. For those of you that are in the United States, there is a way to secure your hard-earned nest egg. American Hartford Gold makes it easy to protect your savings and retirement accounts with physical gold and silver. With one phone call, they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside a qualifying retirement account like your IRA or 401k. American Hartford Gold is the highest rate firm in the United States with an A-plus rating from the BBB, that's the Better Business Bureau, and thousands of satisfied clients right now. They'll give you up to 10 $10,000 of free silver on your first qualifying order. This offer, I'm sorry to tell you, is only for customers from the United States of America. Call 866-505-8315. That's 866-505-8315. Or simply text BRAND to 99-88-99. Then they'll know we sent you. Get up to $5,000 in silver and protect your future in this crazy, crazy world with some solid, precious metals literally made in stars. Now let's get back to the content. New hero Thomas Massey is emerging to rhetorically condemn this bill quite expertly. You'll enjoy this. He's one of those Republicans that seems to be onto this stuff, a kind of another Rand Paul figure who, whilst he might be libertarian, certainly on this issue, he's got some amazing perspectives. Well, I would just close by saying that, you know, we're sitting here with phones made in China. We're wearing suits made in China. We drove cars here with chips that are made in China. And they're our foreign adversary, and by golly, we're going to do something about it. What are we going to do? You're going to tell Americans they can't put a piece of software on their computer. They can't go to certain websites that the president designates. A while ago, Joe Biden was specifically investing money in TikTok influencers because they were of some value. It's an extraordinary world we live in. So I urge my colleagues to oppose this well-intentioned... Well-intentioned, you know, because half of my party are voting for it. Eek. Bill, because it will have bad consequences and I yield back the balance of my time.
Tucker had a post on it and David Sachs posted this. The TikTok bill gives Biden the power to ban websites and apps run by a person subject to the direction or control of a foreign personal entity. Given that Biden routinely smears political opponents as being under the control of Putin, the danger should be obvious. Right, so let's get into this in a little more detail. The House of Representatives voted 352 to 65. Oh no, so it's gonna happen unless something crazy interrupts it. On Wednesday for a bill that threatens to ban the social media platform TikTok. The Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act would ban TikTok from app stores unless its Chinese parent company ByteDance gives up ownership within six months. Former US President Donald Trump, who once attempted to remove TikTok from US app stores, said on March 11th that a TikTok ban could make Facebook bigger, censuring it as an enemy of the people. Billionaire Elon Musk on March the 12th also claimed the bill could restrict access to the app, which he said amounts to censorship and government control. All of the Musk haters out there have got to acknowledge that he's saying that a rival platform to whom he must cede some cyber territory have rights internationally, presumably because of his values, but also perhaps spotting that where this is heading is goodbye Rumble, goodbye X, goodbye everyone except Facebook and Alphabet and organisations that are compliant, because you'd be naive to think, wouldn't you, if you've had a look at the conversations that went on between Mark Zuckerberg and Fauci during the period of the pandemic, that there hasn't been conversations that go, be kind of convenient if there was uh, no TikTok allowed in America. I mean, you know, that might increase Meta's market share. Well, what would you do for us if some legislation made one of your competitors obsolete? I suppose if you asked us to say, like, everyone should stay in their house and that, and that people that said that that might not be a bad idea and they're a contrary narrative to discuss, would sort of shut those down. Win, win, win. The vote moved America a little bit closer to Chinese-style online censorship that TikTok's opponents decry. Whether they acknowledge it or not, TikTok's opponents are using the same arguments that Chinese and Iranian censors can and do use to justify cracking down on social media in their own countries. Right, so again, values and principles. What they're doing, if someone else did it, they wouldn't like it. You know they've banned Facebook because they're anti-free speech. Oh, they're in those countries, which we should probably bomb, by the way, that you already know all of these stories. And the reason this is happening is because there is no vision. There is no ideology. There is just the sustenance and maintenance of power for power's sake to continue to facilitate itself. It's a peculiar serpent consuming itself with no vision, trapping us all in a perennial present, ironically, staring at screens ourselves, lost in melancholy, nostalgia and overstimulation. And it will not let us break out of that. And anything that could potentially be used as a vassal for awakening will be shut down and controlled. They don't care about anything except control. That's what I think. Let me know what you think in the chat. Well, you can. Legislators have made exceedingly clear that the intent of the bill they're currently fast-tracking through Congress is to finally ban TikTok in the United States, as representative Elise Stefanik, Republican New York Chair of the House Republican Conference, proudly put it. Ultimately, the desired end result is the same one that's been long sought by Representative Gallagher, the bill's leading sponsor, to ban TikTok before it's too late. The forced divestiture is merely a mechanism to achieve this predetermined outcome. We're familiar now with the way that these things go. You know, hate speech, protect children, ban just these kind of people that we all agree about. Okay, cool, cool. Well, I suppose that's also a bit of a threat, isn't it? So whilst this is saying, no, we're not actually getting rid of TikTok. We're just saying we don't want them owned by da 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 Well, it's pretty clear that ultimately the aim is to either co-opt and colonise TikTok or eliminate TikTok and its potential for free speech. Speech. In fact, I would argue that it's, in a sense, using TikTok's popularity among a particular generation, a generation that perhaps aren't especially invested in the type of political processes that are currently being undertaken, that makes it an ideal target. And secondarily, the other platforms will be targeted that are relevant, that are explicitly used for free speech issues. Meanwhile, of course, the whole ecosystem of social media platforms will fall immediately into alignment with the establishment and their goals. It's an extraordinary Ordinary tactic. Tick tack toe. Oh, hey, maybe Nancy Pelosi was onto something. Tick tack toe. A winner. Why now? Drafters of the bill are said to have received technical assistance from the White House. President Biden swiftly pledged to sign it. Among the factors that are said to have spurred this latest outburst of legislative activity was a secret briefing last week by the FBI, the Department of Justice and the Director of National Intelligence, Odney. Because it was a classified hearing, I cannot discuss the details, explained Representative Morgan Griffith, a member of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, which sprung into action after receiving the intelligence community presentation. Somewhat ironic that the 
intelligence community are meeting to help us not be spied on when it seems to be a significant portion of their day-to-day work. If the Bill supporters get what they want, millions of Americans would find their ability to access TikTok terminated by the government just in time for the November 2024 election. This radical state intervention was endorsed last week by the House Energy and Commerce Committee in a unanimous 50 to 0 vote, establishing a covered bipartisan consensus in favour of expelling American users from their preferred social media platform. This extreme action is to be carried out as usual in the alleged name of national security and to more aggressively combat perceived foreign adversaries. The bill names TikTok as a foreign adversary controlled application, with the adversary in question being China, but it also goes further and prohibits applications associated with the standard litany of official US adversaries, Russia, North Korea, and Iran. One thing that's good about this bill is you can tell which wars are coming up in the next few months. It's less of a bill and more of a spoiler. More additions to the list are always possible, perhaps in the event that Cuba or Venezuela develop a short form dance video app that becomes suspiciously popular with American teens. Another provision authorizes the president, who is currently Joe Biden and may soon be Donald Trump to make unilateral determinations about whether certain applications present a significant threat to the national security of the United States and therefore must be banned like TikTok. The criteria for making such a determination is left conspicuously vague. It makes you curious, doesn't it, that when they consider Donald Trump to be such an astonishing threat to democracy and the American way of life and that he will make himself a dictator, that they're pushing through legislation that were he to become the president in a matter of months would be exploitable and enormously in order to control free speech. So maybe they know something we don't know about the outcome of the next election. But again, the whole thing is meant to be about election interference. So it can't be that. So if you really want to give Biden or Trump more unilateral power to control the proliferation of content online, this appears to be just the bill for you. If enacted, Americans who suddenly find their access to TikTok terminated by federal decree would include millions of adults, not just minors, by any stretch, for whom TikTok is a primary means of consuming news and information, as well as expressing their own public speech. And in some cases, even earning a livelihood. While China may not have First Amendment right to operate commercial enterprises in the United States, American citizens are certainly afforded First Amendment protections against their speech being abridged by the government. Punitive state intervention to blockade Americans from a massively popular social media platform which they had otherwise used voluntarily to consume the speech of others and express their own speech would be a speech abridging action by the federal government of a magnitude that has no obvious precedent. It's unprecedented censorship in a time where censorship is in all of our minds, when we're all concerned about it, when we've all seen what happened during the pandemic period, when we see what's going on with regard to reporting on and discussing current global conflicts. Pick your conflict, pick one you care about, note the censorship around it, unless conveniently with that conflict you happen to be in alignment with establishment interest, then you won't notice any censorship because at this time it's convenient to your particular perspective. But this is unprecedented and likely will be used to establish a norm. You know, do you still take your shoes off at airports? Has the Patriot Act been revoked since the threat of terror has been rescinded? You can tell me for yourself in the chat whether or not you've noticed measures to relinquish power once it is gained. If the case for banning TikTok advanced by the intelligence community is so airtight and worthy of instant unanimous approval, they should disclose the support and evidence. Otherwise, the public's only option is to credulously accept subjective, questionably motivated claims of unknown intelligence community operators who purport to assess a national security threat posed by communist-controlled teenage dance videos before rashly ejecting up to 170 million American users from a top social media platform, partly based on evidence furnished in these secret star chamber proceedings. Why not declassify and release the relevant evidentiary material so the public can evaluate it from themselves. Why should informed democratic deliberations on the subject be reserved for those with specially approved security clearances? Because that is how power works now and it's necessary and fundamental for you to accept the constant tacit implication that you are not able to determine for yourself what you should do. That's a requirement, isn't it? If you start to demand, well, I'll decide for myself whether or not to undertake a medical procedure, take a medication, read this information, believe this information. Once you asserted a little bit of self-confidence, a bit of self-belief, a bit of trust in yourself and your own ability to assess information, the whole gig starts to become a little bit shaky, doesn't it? But as long as we continue to accept that these people have our best interests and the ability to protect our best interests, then I guess we're just going to have to sit here and be censored and controlled until there's really nothing left to discuss 
no one left to say it. In March 2023, debate over an earlier iteration of the TikTok banning bill, Senator Rand Paul said, this isn't just about the company, this is about the rights of 150 million Americans. Allegations that TikTok functions as a funnel to the Chinese government were nothing more than innuendo and conjecture, Paul charged. Likewise, a Justice Department memo supporting the TikTok bill last week vaguely alludes to the potential for the PRC, China, to influence content on TikTok, but cites no concrete examples of this purported PRC manipulation ever happening. If that was the problem, you would have to examine and dismantle Meta, Facebook, Alphabet, Google, YouTube, because they are all using information to manipulate you. That indeed is what they do. As they say these days, it's not a bug, it's a feature. That's precisely why these companies are so enormous and so powerful. Of course, they're advertising well on a monumental and unprecedented and bespoke scale, but the ability to identify individuals and control the information they see, whether it's buy these shoes or vote for this party, is exactly the function of those sites. And if this regulation was applied to any one of a number of social media platforms, unless they are front and centre all about free speech, then you would have to ban all of them. And that is a possibility, but I think what's probably more likely is ban all of them that are not supportive of the establishment agenda. The drive to ban TikTok has parallels to the European Union rushing to ban Russia today and other Russian-owned media outlets after Russians' invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Thanks to the unique inheritances of the First Amendment, the US could not be so easily compelled to take such blunt force censorship action. However ardently, American political and media elites might have shared the anti-Russian sentiments of their EU counterparts. Those inheritances will surely be eroded if Congress plows ahead with its feverishly expedited TikTok ban. It's true that TikTok's content moderation falls in line with the wishes of Chinese censors. But again, foreign critics can say the same about US-based social media companies. The US government has infamously prodded tech companies to hand over user data, both overtly and covertly. The US military and intelligence services even use advertising data to track potential targets. For years, several federal agencies have been spending US tax dollars to buy American data from private bulk sellers. As some members of Congress seek a new law against the practice, the Joe Biden administration is pushing back on the effort to curtail the power to buy the information that would otherwise require a warrant. So if that was true, if what they're saying about TikTok was true, why are they simultaneously doing the exact opposite elsewhere? They are resisting and lobbying to avoid a bill to prevent them buying literally your private data. What do you think they're doing with it? They're using it to track you, to manipulate you, to control you. We've reached a point, and perhaps all of us felt this a little when we saw Vladimir Putin talking to Tucker Carlson. Vladimir Putin, he ain't the world's sweetest, loveliest guy. He's a warlord. He's a Mongol descended, former Soviet KGB murderer and tyrant who criminally invaded Ukraine. Sure thing, all day long. But curiously, because he's not in charge of a country that I live in, when he talks, I feel like the stuff you're saying makes more sense to me than the stuff they're saying. I've got no interest in invading all these other countries. Look, we're sort of in charge of this region. You get me. I've got nuclear missiles. How far do you want to take this thing. It makes more sense than Biden saying, oh, freedom, we care about freedom. We know that that's a lie. And they know that we know. So what reality are we living in now? The reality that they send down the line to us or put out into the ether to us. And they don't want us having options because we know we wouldn't choose their one. The Biden administration has used the spectre of disinformation to push social media moderation in line with their policies. Meta has censored Middle Eastern content that opposes US foreign policy, while Twitter has previously created loopholes for the US military to run its own propaganda accounts, forcing TikTok, under American control, is a way to block that escape route. Instead of protecting Americans from Chinese censorship, it would bring Chinese-style censorship home and facilitate more of it, and it wouldn't be the end of it. When they came for TikTok, I said nothing. When they came for Rumble and X, there was no one left to say anything. Hey, but that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments and the chat? Remember, join our movement. We are part of this opposition. We have to do this together. We simply have no choice. Mummy isn't coming. Daddy isn't coming coming. No one's coming. It's down to you. Stay free. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.